Hey, what's up? I'm Guy. I'm John. Welcome to our YouTube channel. Subscribe to the channel. Give this video a like. We appreciate it. Also, check out our podcast down below in the uh, description. Give it a subscribe. All right, John. If you're a Cowboys fan watching this, try and keep your pants on. We know you think you got the steal of the draft. And you know what? You might have. The Eagles wanted CD. Well, how about CD's nuts? <laughs> uh, the first <laughs> player selected from a yacht. Yeah. I, you know, when the, when the draft started, if you would have circled the Cowboys at 17, I think first – you would have said probably the top three wide receivers would have been gone. But if one of them was left, I think CD was widely viewed as a guy that was going to be at, at minimum the second wide receiver off the board. And when it went rugs and then Elway went Judy, just kind of laying there in the Cowboys' lap that, listen, the Cowboys had some other needs. He just lost Byron Jones, big contract with the Miami Dolphins. But you got it. what do they say? BPA, follow the board. To me, this guy was a top 10 player in the draft. And I, I know they just spent a lot of money on Amari Cooper. Gallup's a good player. They got, they're paying Zeke a lot of money. But, man, it's an offensive league. Mike McCarthy has a long history of, of doing big things with a lot of wide receivers. And this, this group's pretty stacked, guy. Yeah, I mean, look, you mentioned it. Amari had 79 catches, led the team. Michael Gallup had 66 catches. That was second on the Cowboys. Uh, Zeke was fifth on the team with 54 catches, but he's the third – leading returning receiver because Jason Witten and Cobb are gone. And Witten and Cobb yeah. combined for 118 catches. Witten and Cobb, they, they produce. They produce. That's 40% of the Cowboys catches are gone. So well, they need someone to get them. One key to me with the Cowboys, and, and you and me have watched Amari Cooper's entire career since he got into the NFL. I, I know he was paid like a one. But and on certain games, he can operate like a one. But I think he's best served to really either be a one B or a two. And at the end of the day, the money doesn't change who you are as a player. I think CeeDee Lamb's upside at worst case, you just got two really good twos or maybe this guy can become a one. Remember, Crabtree and Amari. And, and I think the great thing about having a guy like CD has some parallels to Crabtree when he was with the Raiders, the good version, contested catches. Uh, physical play, kind of balance out the things that Amari's not great at, and, and you can win and put up huge points when Amari has the balance on the other side because he's already shown in Dallas playing indoors on the fast turf. He can be really good. You put CeeDee Lamb, who to me, some shades of Des Bryant just in terms of the physical play, contested catches. I think he's a little faster coming out of college, but that type player to go with Amari, I, I don't – and with Zeke, I mean, that's a damn good one, two, three punch. You know, we talk about this all the time, and you said it earlier. When you pay a player, that doesn't change who the player is. So if you pay a player, you might as well try and make that player as good as possible. At some point, we think Dak is going to get paid. So you might as well make him worth the money to whatever degree you can. You mentioned it, Mike McCarthy. This is from uh, your old scouting buddy and our boy Daniel Jeremiah. The run after the catch is really the first thing we're going to look at, John, as we head into – the film room. And look at this. Let's get fired up. This is C.D. Lamb getting ready. You can see where he is, John. He's at Jerry's Palace, Cowboy Stadium, you, you, locked in. You know, one guy, one guy that I think McCarthy, I'm sure, said to Jerry, you know who he reminds me a little bit of, uh, would be Devontae Adams, who he has some experience with in, in Green Bay. I, just in terms of the ball in his hands, the playmaking ability, the physical nature. Uh, I bet Mike McCarthy goes, well, if I could do that over him. He's like – was the best player on my team a couple years ago. He was worth way more than we got him for. So you get a guy like this to go on your offense with the other speed. It's a game changer, yeah. man. Well, I think it's a great call because I think now, obviously Devonte Adams was in the mountain West, but uh, if we went back at his college film, I bet it would look similar. A guy who's not a blazer, either a running over the middle, breaking tackles and running away from people still, or B he was a big, he was a big over the top, big play guy for, for big Derek time. Carr. All right, John, so let's start with that, the, the rack, the yak, making plays, making guys miss. Um, Texas had trouble tackling CeeDee Lamb. Yeah, it's, uh, that'll lead to a defensive coordinator getting fired. But I also think it just shows with the ball in his hands, his body and balance control, his power and uh, his ability when he faces contact, you know, to keep his body upright and keep moving forward, like – to me, he doesn't look like the most powerful player, 
but his film shows a very powerful player, yeah. right? Yeah, that's a, a guy that call. goes right through tackles, a guy that, to me, the body and balance control as a wide receiver with the football in your hands and you're getting hit by guys running full speed and that are fast because defensive backs in Power 5 conferences, definitely in the NFL, are just moving at a pretty high rate of speed. It's really impressive. The bad news is the Longhorns did not learn their lesson on how to tackle CeeDee Lamb. To me, this might be his defining play of his college career. I mean, guy, he juked out six guys here. H- how does he score? H- how's that even humanly possible? And he's, that's, I, that's impressive. I know it's not NFL DBs, but, I mean, some of these guys are. We'll, we'll look at that later. Do um, you think you might want to keep a, keep a hat on a hat there when two comes but, out of but the backfield? But your point, man. He's hard to catch, even though he's not a blazer relative to, like, Henry Ruggs. He is just elusive. How about the Eagles quarterback throwing it to the Cowboys wide receiver? Is that Wentz? <laughs> We're gonna. This is, that's, this is impressive play, th- John. This is the beauty of CD Lamb tape: is you get to watch the Cardinals quarterback, the Browns quarterback, and the uh, Eagles backup quarterback. In theory, <laughs> the guy that's going to take that's the true. Eagles to the NFC Championship. Here, here's another underrated part about CD, and I think you see it come out on film: is he's a fluid athlete. You know, the ability to make a guy miss the ability just in the open field, just subtle moves, but it's always going forward. You know, I mean, here he's running sideline to sideline as he's moving forward. You never see a guy that's like running backwards that tries to make guys miss and loses yards. Watch how he it's easily could. It's always vertical. Sorry, I was going to say he could easily on this run. He could twice kind of lose his footing first when he cuts it back and then over the middle when he jumps across and then that would go as a touchdown. Watch the move here when he just, starts to cut towards the middle of the field right there. You know, you know what, what word I don't think we use enough during draft time? It, it gets used in draft rooms, but just on the outside, the Mel Kuypers, the, the Haberman and Middlecoff YouTube page is instincts because at the end of the day, you need an instinct. Like the best players, for the most part, are very, very instinctive. It's based on stuff from when they were in junior high, high school, college. It just comes second nature to me. He is an extremely instinctive player. Like everything is just, he makes it like this. It looks so difficult. But to me, I bet if you ask him, like, how'd you do that? He's like, I don't even, I just, I just played. You know, I just, look at that shit, man. I, and I get it's the Big 12 and it's That's not fair. the SEC or the Big 10 defense. But guy, does he not, does this not look like a high school tape of a it guy does. that you'd say, yeah, this guy's going to Alabama from, uh, from Oklahoma. Yeah, P- right? PFF College had. CD Lamb with 26 broken tackles on 62 catches this year. So that's almost half of his catches he had a broken tackle on. And to me, it's like a couple of the Texas ones like that. But that is, these guys are in great position. He's making these moves that just make them look like little kids. I mean, again, a lot of these guys at K-State, they're not scrubs. Like some of these guys are, I'm sure, going to be going to camps over the next couple of years. But how about the dive there from 56? Hold on. we I'll watch this play one more time before we get to some of his deep balls. <laughs> Let's watch this dive here. 56 when he cuts it back. Right here. Not even yeah, close. <laughs> that's, he's getting made fun of on the on the film session on Sunday morning. All right, but it's not all over the middle. I think one thing, and we just did a Henry Ruggs video, and a lot of the, the Ruggs tape, the, the deep ball Ruggs is open by 10 yards. You know, it's not the C- CD Lamb definitely has plays, John, where he's running wide open. This is his sophomore year. That's, I think, yeah, that's Kyler throwing this ball. Um but a lot of his deep balls are plays where he has to make a catch somewhat contested. Well, when you're not a 4-4-2 guy and you're running go routes or, you know, that's like an out and up or a yeah. sluggo, anything that's going to go vertical, for the most part, right, you're going to be in a contested situation. That's where, to me, when I use Devontae Adams, I think DeAndre Hopkins kind of comes up. What separates those guys in situations where, where they are covered? Well, a couple things. They have great awareness in terms of using their body to get the ball. Their ability and their catching radius is out, out fucking rageous. Their ability also to high point the football and concentrate in the air is outstanding. They have great hands. They're kind of the total package for those situations. Like if you notice, a lot of guys aren't comfortable in those situations. Sometimes the speed guys aren't because they're used to being open and not having a guy around them. I, I'd say the guys that aren't the Blazers get used to a lot of their career. Like that's how they make most of their catches, right? Especially once they get to a higher level in college, you don't run away from guys. So actually you're comfortable 
It's like being a shitty golfer. You get comfortable hitting the ball from not in the fairway. Well, you're used to hitting balls out of the woods. Whether you're good at it or not, you're used to the view. Like, it's actually shocking when you're in the middle of the fairway. This, this, CeeDee Lamb's not going to be wide open in the pros, right? They're going to be guys. Every corner he plays, for the most part, is going to be able to run with them. Now, where they're going to be fucked is you're going to be draped all over him, and he's still going to high point the ball. I think the term they use on – they get mossed. Like, that's – that ability is something that, that – that's where I think some crab tree from the Raiders when he was really great – he was great at like back shoulder catches. Don't you think that's going to be a big yeah, thing I, with Dak and, and CD? Yeah, and we'll get to we'll get to one of those in a second in the red zone. But I think it's a great point. I you know we talk about it a lot, you and I, over the years with pros. It's why sometimes aging. It's a good pass by Jalen right it there. It is a good throw. Um, it's why sometimes aging receivers who were never predicated on speed adjust to age better, right? You think about Crabtree's a great one, or Anquan Bolden's another one. Anquan never relied just on speed. And so as time went on, as he aged, he was the same player. Um, and your point being, no matter how fast you are in college, eventually you're just going to get covered. You're going to have to make plays. And this guy's used to that. Well, well think about this. And, and he could really run when he was younger. But why do you think Larry Fitzgerald, when the dust settles, is going to have a 20-year career? Because yeah. his ball skills are elite. So when you can track he the might ball, have the best. I mean, you talk about the best yeah, all time ball skills might be fixed. Yeah, might might be up. But when you have those like Anquan Bolden ball skills, now and CD's faster than Anquan was like four seven eight. When you think about uh, Keenan Allen is a guy that's let's call a spade a spade. You know, in the four sevens, ball skills, instincts of just working in the open field. You know, moving his hands to catch the ball, not being a body. You can't be a body catcher, right? If you can't run. Cause you're going to have to extend your arms. And I, again, guy, you and I talked before we hit play on this video. I, I will be shocked if CD fails. And I think there's a very good chance of all the first rounders of like, you know, of, if you tell me 10 of the 32 hit, I would throw him in that mix. And I think that of the 16 guys that went before him, the stats will show us historically, right? Five or six of them are not going to look great. And if he's good, it's going to look like, how did this guy last till 17? Yeah. You know, well, like in, in five or six years, it might go, that guy should have gone top five. This is against a probably a first-round corner next year, right? Now, in Patrick Sertan's defense, as a freshman two years ago, but this is kind of your red zone, the back shoulder throw you were Is that not about. just a little little blue chip uh, trio right it there, is. the quarterback, the corner, and the, and the wide receiver? Uh, but, you know, we, we did a video on Brandon Ayuk, which you can go watch and – one thing Kyle Shanahan, who traded up for Brandon Ayuk, I, I think based on what he said, it's safe to guess that C.D. Lamb was the number one receiver on Kyle Shanahan's board. Yeah, now, he was I think gone he was. and he went with Ayuk. But is it safe to think that a good number of teams in the league had C.D. Lamb number one on their board among receivers? Uh, everyone I talk to absolutely loves C.D. Lamb because I think when you factor in his football character, which you and I know people at Oklahoma, they love this guy. And two, the tape is just – it's not just the Big 12 defenses. When he played better competition, he dominated. And I, I also think, like, just back to what you what you say, it's hard for these guys to fail. When you have the three-year production, you get at Oklahoma when they're humming, and you play immediately. You know, he came in, guy, as a true freshman in 2017, 46 catches, seven touchdowns. Yeah. A, 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 that's you're talking back to back years of Baker Mayfield, them kicking everyone's ass. And then these last two years, boom, raised it even another level. I, I also think that it just these guys translate to the league like this type player. And we have so many recent examples. Wouldn't you say like three or four of the best wide receivers are, quote unquote, not burners, great high point physical type guys like that's to me right in his mold. Mm -hmm. This is just. Like, is he going to have a couple just being on the Cowboys? Maybe not Odell Beckham type plays. But isn't this? The, I mean, now this is out of bounds. Yeah, but just couldn't you see him on a Monday night game, Cowboys Eagles, just like having a going viral yes. or something like yes, this? Yes, I can. I'm watching it right now. Because I think the Cowboys will be on Monday night football once or twice, John. Call me I, crazy. I, I also but. think. I mean, maybe as the uh, as we get into the season, it's going well or bad, or maybe they pay him by then. I think this pick puts dramatic pressure on the quarterback now because you could argue that their top three wide receivers, their star running back, they still have a good offensive line. They obviously have a 
offensive proven head coach. You know, McCarthy's much more proven, I'd say, his resume than uh, than Jason Garrett was. And Jason Garrett wasn't probably as bad as everyone shit on him for, but he clearly was limited. Th- th- there is a lot of pressure now on this quarterback, and I, and I think you could justify, I know teams don't like to do this, but just maybe play this season out on the franchise tag and just see how it goes with your, with your coach, with these wide receivers. Because I do think quarterback's never a plug-and-play position, but you can't tell me, guy, if Dak struggles with these guys, they couldn't think we could get someone in here that could function or be better. Yeah, I mean, way look, cheaper. maybe they think that. And uh, you're probably right. It does put pressure on them. But to me, it's like you'd rather have pressure put on you because you have a bunch of weapons around you and you got paid than pressure on you because you don't have a bunch of weapons around you and you got to do it yourself. Like the one thing you'd say to your point, if they wanted to play it out, if that can't improve and take another step this year, with all these guys around him, then that would be. Kind it, al- of an it allows you to it allows you to pivot, where if you do pay him and it doesn't go well this year with a coach who's never coached him, you are stuck with him. Uh, tough guy, tough guy, C.D. Lamb. Watch this block on a linebacker. Here he comes. Jesus. One thing you notice when the playoff start guy. Mac Mac Wilson, NFL player. CeeDee Lamb, NFL player. Kyler Murray, NFL player. Dude tackling him, Sertain, NFL player. Like, just, you get to the playoffs, if you don't have 10-plus draftable players, you just, you shouldn't go to the playoffs. To me, that should be a new criteria. What's the playoff voting this year? Well, we have our, we have our board of directors. We also have three GMs that are going to chime in and are going to give the roster breakdowns, right? (laughs) John, I don't think we need the breakdown, though. I mean, the, uh, the prerequisite because it it's just how it works out yeah it's true you know? just how it works out all right man i can't wait to see the guy, this guy with the star on the side of his helmet i'd draft this guy in your fantasy league if i were you what do you think over under over under 55 catches for cd lamb this year yeah I, i'd put that number at 60 to 70 the the leading wide receiver this year i think was uh it was either DK Metcalf or AJ Brown. One of the two of them had 58 catches because Debo Ruben had 57. Out. Yeah. So to me, if you get in the high 50s, you're you're being really productive. Think how we think about AJ Brown, you know, Debo Samuel and DK Metcalf. We all say they had great w- rookie, you know, campaigns. Most rookie wide receivers aren't 80 to 90 catches. And when you factor in who he's playing with and how much they run the ball, I'd say if he gets to like his college numbers, 62, 65, something like that. It'd be a really productive season, especially when you say, I'd say seven, eight touchdowns. He'd be, he's going to be their red zone target now that Witten's gone. And Am- that's not really Amari's deal, right? Unless it's outside of like the 15, 20. Yeah. He's kind of like uh, longer touchdowns, not necessarily like a red zone threat at the five yard line. To me, this guy is your back shoulder fades, your jump balls in the red zone. Wouldn't shock me if this guy has four or five red zone touchdowns for the Cowboys this year. All right. Go get I it. I like him. We like him. Daniel Jeremiah likes him. Mike McCarthy likes him. Jerry Jones loves him. Stealing we need the you to like this video. Like this video. Well said.